gather round, ladies and gents, for the spectacle known as Brood Sport, the ancient ritual to determine the greatest fighter in all of the land. In one corner today, we have Adra from Korea, from USA. In the other corner, we have none other than F91. Brood Sport is the ancient art to decide the greatest fighter in all of the land. And these two combatants will fight to the death to determine who among them is greatest in the foreigner scene. Today we are joined by Plexa and Chill to cast this monumental event. And here is Plexa. What's up guys? And um, Chill, how are you doing over there in Canada? Uh, I'm cold as usual, but I'm pretty excited for this game actually. You know, it's like cliched that I, I, you can't hear excitement in my voice, but it's 9am and I'm pretty pumped for this actually. So uh, I think it's going to be a pretty crazy series. I am unbelievably pumped for the series. I've been pumped for it all week. And big props to ZXK3 for all those magnificent photoshops we've been seeing all week. Uh, namely, Hydra Van Dam, or Greg Van Dam rather, and F91, Chung Lee, whatever you want to call it. So mad props to you guys. Thanks, for the, thanks to the graphics team for all their help on assembling this event. Um, good stuff, guys. Um, so yeah, getting back to the liquidation at hand here, we have... First ever brood sport, which is quite possibly the richest liquidation we have ever done. There is a possibility for one player here to win over, uh, up to two hundred and seventy-five dollars in one single in seven games. That is an absolute monumental amount, and uh, I don't think we've ever done anything this price of this much money on the line for such short games ever before, except for maybe the TSL. Um, these two players have very little history. Um, they've only actually met one other time in official play. That was at uh, Worldwide Invitational. Um, Chill, do you remember how that went? Uh, I don't remember the game specifically, but I remember Idra uh, took it 2-1. Uh, the only thing I can mention is that Idra has you know, very little respect for foreigners in general. And uh, to add to that, he's you know, even less respect, if that's even possible, for the Chinese. And given F9-1's uh, kind of aggressive all in I mean I'm really really excited to see if that puts Idra on tilt I mean it's definitely a possibility here oh definitely I mean if not one does have probably the most annoying sire when all of the foreign scene and we all know that um, Idra doesn't exactly have the best patience in the world so I mean we could see some spot farm fireworks flying between the two maybe a bit of in-game banter I don't know we could see a, a whole lot of things going on today and I guess that's what makes this matchup so, uh, so exciting I mean um, Idra has got an amazing TVZ. I mean, undoubtedly it's his best matchup. I mean, you, you'd be foolish to disagree, really. On top of that, he does play a really solid conservative style. And his he does tend to get frustrated by all-in builds, so F91 style pretty much is the counter what, to what Idra does. Um, on the other hand, F91 is basically the best Chinese Zerg at the moment. Um, he's taken games of great players, um, notably Stork. Um, he just recently took out JF and Liquidition, so I mean, this guy is, is on his game, and I mean, I would be scared to go up against <laughs> Yeah, and he took JF out with, like, solid play. I mean, JF, uh, I guess not to his discredit, but JF looked a little off that that uh, series. He didn't look like he was playing to his full potential. Maybe uh, he, he got a little arrogant being at the top, but I mean, uh, even JF on an off day is still a monster to take out, and F91 made it look fairly easy, so... He is a pretty scary Zerg to be going up against. And another thing I just want to point out here before uh, before we get going on the player bios is that uh, Idra really, really is a player who succumbs to pressure quite a bit. Um, this is a lot of money. I mean, it, a lot of leagues you play 60-man uh, or 64-man tournaments or 128-man tournaments to win $100. I mean, there's a lot of money on the line for just seven games, and you got to know that you know, oh, well over 1,000 people are going to be watching you play. That's a little unnerving, and that is going to affect Idra. I think F91 will handle the pressure a lot more than it than Idra will, and I think mind games are going to play a lot here. Uh, as we said, Idra susceptible to the kind of rush builds, and I would expect him to see. I would expect him to see Idra playing, you know, better games if he gets his momentum going. But if he gets kind of disrupted with the with a, a rush or something like that, Idra will go on tilt so fast, and you'll see it directly in his play. Yeah, I completely agree with what you just said.
But although Idra does get a little frustrated, one thing that we should consider about the series is that F91 has recently been hospitalized because of um, a, a rather serious cold, and that has affected his preparation and, and uh, his build up to the series. So, uh, if he, his play looks a little off, I mean, that could explain why he's not playing to his full potential. So, I mean, that's, that's something we should that should be taken into consideration when evaluating the series. And I mean, but in all honesty, to make some predictions here, Chill, I think that. Idra is going to take the series 5-2. I think he's going to drop Talcross, and I think he will drop either Andromeda or Colosseum. That's my bet. Alright, let me look through the map pool. I think F9 will take uh, Talcross, will take uh, Chupong, Idra will take Andromeda, uh, uh, F91 will take Raid Assault, uh, F91 will take Colosseum, uh, Idra will take Destination, and F91 will take Medusa. So I've got F91 4-3. Yeah, nice result. Um, one thing that um, Artosis was telling me before this series actually took off was that um, Idra actually has a very good build plan for Raid Assault, apparently, and it was a build that managed to defeat Savior on his first game on Raid Assault, and Savior's no pushover on Raid Assault. He went 5-1 in Pro League, so I mean, it must be a pretty serious build on Raid Assault, so... That'll be interesting to see once we get to it, but right now, we're coming up to F91's pick of a map, and that was Tau Cross. And now, Chil, what can you say about this map? Well, I mean, it's very open and it's very old. We've seen a kind of a reinvention of the map lately. Uh, long rush distance, so any sort of 4 pool or 5 pool here isn't going to be that good, especially because it can be scouted and then you can block your choke with the depot. So I'm not going to expect to see any sort of rush build out of here. Uh, this kind of old school play really favored Lurker, but we haven't seen that too much lately. I'd like to see a throwback to that because I think it's a really strong build, and uh, it it takes you know it's a it's a heavily uh, macro favored map, so it takes a lot of uh, a, a lot of multitasking to keep that army going and keep it attacking the proper places, keeping your army set up as a Terran. So I think this is going to favor the Zerg style of play, but I mean Idra, Idra is really good at controlling huge armies and making a lot of units, so. Uh, I've got to give the advantage to F91, but it should be a should be a fabulous game if it gets into the mid game. All right, then. Well, I think we should get this series started. Karnak, are you ready? All right, then. Let's get this going. Um, game one of Bruceport number one uh, between F91 and Idra, starting now. And here we have Idra spawning at six o'clock in brown, and F91 spawning in red at l the top left-hand corner of the map. Um, yeah, so I, I really expect F91 to play slightly cheesy on this map, even though you said here play a more macro style. I mean, Idra's pr almost probably, almost definitely going to be playing a fast expansion style, and I wouldn't be surprised if F91 tries to pressure him with something here. That's true. I mean, I don't expect to see any sort of rush build like nine pool or over pool speed or anything like that. But, I mean, three hatch uh, speedlings all in is very viable. Uh, if I was F91, I would play something kind of tricky. I mean, like a fake spire into lurkers or some sort of drop build. That's what I'd be phasing. But, I'm the you know, the Chinese are really famous for coming up with, uh, you know, really effective all-in builds. Not really ingenious, but just uh, really effective in their execution and, uh, and how they come together. So, I would not be surprised at all to see a, a very well put together all-in from F91 in this game. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, Rhett was talking about last week how, oh, like two weeks ago, that how F91 can come up with some amazing, amazing all-in builds, some very complicated builds, some involving two hydraulic stins, some involving double spire, some involving double lair. I mean, he is a very talented Zerg, and he does know how to play his cards right and how to exploit his opponent's lack of knowledge to the best of his ability. Um, we can see here, Idris put his supply depot below his command center to speed up his. ACV mining, a pretty standard trick, and he's adding his racks at 11, so nothing too peculiar for Mitra thus far. <laughs> I'm getting hate messages from Zulu Nation 8 that uh, the Chinese don't cheese more than other players, which I really have to disagree with that, specifically F91. He's known as like the cheeser, so I don't know where Zulu's getting his information from. I see a 12 hatch going up and a drone scout is going to scout the wrong direction. Uh, not really a big deal since the Overlord is in position at the 6 o'clock base. Uh, so everything's looking pretty standard thus far. Yeah, I mean, I don't know Zulu. I mean, on the whole, Chinese players tend to be slightly more aggressive than the other other foreigners in, foreigners in the scene. 
However, F91 is pretty much known for his cheese builds and his all-in, so... Well, he can't be, you know, extrapolated to account for all Chinese players, I mean... And it's certainly very true of his own style. Alright, so we see from the one barracks and the two marines in there, and all the minerals being saved up, Idris sending out an SCV, gonna be a fast expansion. We've got, uh, 1211 from, uh, from F91. The standard follow-up would be 1211-13, so there should be another hatchery going down, but he's not doing that. He's built up drones uh, now at 15 supplies, so this is a little strange, a little non-standard. Uh, no gas tells me that it is going to be a 3-hatch build, but not the standard 3-hatch, which is a little strange. Uh, I, I mean, not nothing wrong with it, it's just not standard. Uh, I've never really seen anything like this in modern Zerg. Uh, this is kind of a throwback to the old way of playing Zerg, where you go up to 16 and then make the hatchery. Yeah, well, that's what, exactly what he did. It was either 15 or 16 where he dropped that um, hatchery there, and he's adding his gas now, so I mean, this does look very much like the savior esque um, three hatch build about the time that Tar Cross was popular. Yeah, for sure, and it's going to be interesting to see if he goes into kind of a throwback build. Like, uh, I really am crossing my fingers extra hard to see Hydra Lurker here. Uh, you, we haven't seen Hydra Lurker in so long. I mean, it's now kind of a ZVP build instead of a. ZVT build and Hydra Lurker was the definitive build on uh, s certain maps for a while, so uh, I'd really like to see that. Uh, and you can see the kind of the result of this build. F91 already at 400 minerals, waiting for that Overlord. So this is why people don't do this build anymore. You build up all the larva, build up all the minerals, and don't put them to work. And you can see his layer is going to be a little late too, as a result. So uh, a, a bit of a misstep in the early game, but obviously not that big a deal thus far. Interesting choice by Idril though, he's only decided to build three marines from his two barracks, or from his one barracks, and because he's been cutting marines so hard, he's been able to get his, bar his second barracks up really fast, and an academy up, so he's going to be, be able to pump out academy tech units quite quickly, I mean, it's probably a good choice seeing as F91 hasn't decided to do anything cheesy thus far. Yeah, and Idris got, had that SCV in his base, it's still in the base thus far, uh, so he can see exactly what's going on, he can see there's not many... Uh, not many Zerglings. He see, he doesn't see there's a layer in the main, but he's got to know the layers at the natural. And uh, by doing this, getting two barracks and an academy up really quickly, you can feel safe with the medics out and add fire bats if a lot of Zerglings are coming. So it is kind of a safe build. Uh, no Hydralisk Den or no tech shown from F91 thus far. He may be waiting to kill that SCV. Now the SCV leaving, uh, going to the natural, so it's going to be taken out. Uh, still no Den, and looks like it's going to be a Spire build then, given the uh, second gas. And I think that's a very good decision to make, especially since this is very, very reminiscent of Saviour and how Saviour's style was pretty much mutualist oriented. Um, with the design of that, the natural around 6 o'clock there, I mean, mutualist harass would be quite effective um, given the proximity of those minerals towards that ledge. I mean, with uh, how mutant micro has come over the years, um, it may just be that much more effective. And for anyone who caught the, the initial interviews, the Artos is saying that. Uh, F91's Mutalist Micro will be very easy for Idra to handle given that he fights pro gamer mutas every day. We're going to have to see if that's true. I, I don't particularly agree with that statement. I mean, uh, F91 has shown some fantastic Mutalist Micro, but we're going to have to see. And uh, Idra moving out with a small group here, two bats, two medics, and about uh, four marines. Yeah, we can see F91 is, is preparing his Zerglings for any kind of funny stuff that Idra's trying to pull, which he has seen with his overload on that, li on that ledge. And so I'm just going to be looked to pressure with this group against that natural there. But with this, these Zerglings running behind it, he sh he's looking to take out this group and looking to take a sizable advantage from that. And we can see here that I'm just coming in and attacking the third base here. And it'll be interesting to see how F91 reacts to this right now. F91 rallying uh, Zerglings from the natural, so he's waiting for that full group. Now he comes in with the surround. Fire bats get trapped out of position, and that group is just going to get uh, completely taken out. Good bat micro there, but the rest of the group is taken out uh, pretty much for nothing. It was a good idea by Idra, but this is why you don't pressure against uh, Zergs who get Zergling speed at the start. Those small groups just can't do anything. And I'm sure Idra would prefer to have those two medics and those five marines back to defend against Mutalis now. Uh, Given the spires up and the Mutalis are hatching thus far. Yeah, with that many marines lost, I would be slightly worried as Idra. Um, about whether I'll be able to deal with that Mutalis Micro or not. I mean, he, you can see he's chucking up two turrets at his natural and two at his main, and I don't think that'll be enough if if 91's Micro is good enough, which I think it will be. So here we go. Uh, 
This is really a uh, strong play from F91. He's got lurkers coming from the Hydro's Den. He's got a lot of Zerglings. He's got nine meters out, and he's got his third natural up. So quite a bit ahead thus far. Idra got uh, two turrets, putting up two more, so he'll have four at that natural. Uh, no Marines in there. There could be a nice little Zergling run by uh, oppor or Opportunity here if F91 gets the Zerglings in to take out the turrets. Just harassing the refinery a bit, forcing a cancel. That's really annoying. And that refinery is notoriously susceptible to... Uh, to a bit of mutilus caress in in, uh, in this map. A lot of drones for F91 hatching. He's got his Evo chamber up, uh, plus one carapace starting. So he's really set uh, set himself up uh, to look good here. And Idra surprisingly moving out now, realizing he needs to come back to defend. F91 is playing great here. He's been able to pick off exactly all of Idra's stuff. He's been able to capitalize on when Idra's moving out and be able to do a really good job with those mutilists. Here we go. We can see some brilliant mutilists micro here by F91. I guess Artosis' statement was a little off there. Meanwhile, Idra has got a starport up and he should be putting up a science facility relatively soon. And that should uh, assist greatly with dealing with these mutilists. The really annoying thing here is Idra has been trying to get that refinery up forever and it's just really hard, especially if you're going into sort of an SK style. Uh, it's re it's really difficult to get that refinery up because it's so susceptible. You can't even get turrets to the left of it. Now here come in the Zerglings. Finally, here comes a run by a mutiling run by. It looks like Idra doesn't care. He's just gonna try to finish the game. That is such a miscalculation. He should be coming back to defend. He's gonna lose his entire main. He's gonna lose control of his barracks, and he's not gonna be able to do anything. As look at all the hydralists. Look at the sunkens. He'll be able to take out the third, but training your main for the third. Looks like he realizes he needs to finish the game. Going into the natural, uh, not waiting for the medics. A bit of a misstep there. A lot of these. Marines are at one health, but he does break through. Uh, F91 jamming cutely with uh, with a lurker there, but it looks like there's a space Idra can get through, and this is going to be it. He's going to have to finish here, uh, given that he's lost his main completely. Idra has lost way too many Marines to those Zerglings, and once those lurkers hatch, and without any... S oh, he, he does still have a scanner. If F91 was smart right now, he'd take out both those scanners, and then Idra wouldn't be able to deal with these lurkers, and the game would be over for him. Nevertheless, Idra is attacking that natural. He's doing a very good job of that. He's taking out the Hyperless then. He scans with the one Lurker, the Lurker burrows, and oh, nice control. Oh no, Lurker Bug! The infamous Lurker Bug, where if you kill it just as it kills it, shoots out that spine, it does 40 damage. Uh, very, very bad luck for Idra there, and well, <laughs> great. And that's pretty much game right there. There we go, there's the GG, and Idra loses the first game, and F91 takes a serious lead. Up. And something to note, um, more so than just losing the game, is getting hit with that lurker bug. If Idris saw that, he's just the kind of player who that will set him on tilt like none other. So look for uh, look for a bit of different play in the second game because I could see him being very angry that he got hit with that lurker bug right at the end of the game. I mean, he had no chance. The third had lurkers morphing at it. Even if he did clean out the main, there's no way he had the units to kill the third with lurkers and... Uh, eventually Sunken's up there. So, I mean, the game was all but over, but that's still a bit of a kick when you're down. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was real bad luck there for Idra, but still, I mean, he did make the miscalculation of going and attacking F91 when his when he really should have come home and tried to defend that Mutilus Caress, and indeed the Zergling rung by. But overall, I've got to say, I'm impressed with F91's play thus far. I mean, his Zergling control right at the start was, was pretty damn near spot on. I mean... It, it, it's hard to, you know, take credit away from F91. He didn't do anything wrong, but I don't think he did anything particularly amazing. His Mutalist Micro looked, you know, like, good. Nothing nothing incredible. He didn't win the game on Mutalist Micro, and, I mean, seeing Idra move out, that just spoon-fed Idra the game. When You can't move out when there's 12 Zerglings waiting to backstab, and you've got to know those Zerglings are there. So, uh, I really think Idra was off that game, as opposed to F91 being on. Yeah, well... That said, F91 was playing very solidly. I mean, I, I'm impressed that he has been able to match Idra toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I mean, he is, after all, supposedly a B-level pro gamer, <coughs> which really is, you know, should set him quite far apart from F91. But I, I do agree that the reason that Idra lost that game was his own fault there. He should have he should have come home, defended, or he should have even stayed home and defended well. Uh, moving on, though, uh, we move on to Idra's map. Maybe he'll feel more comfortable here. We're moving on to Sin Chupon Ryong. Um, Chill, what do you think about this map? Yeah, Idra's got to feel comfortable here. This is a map he's been training on non-stop, and, and this is a map that pro, gam pro gamers have really been studying. Uh, I find this map uh, lends itself to kind of neutral standoffs quite a bit. 
Uh, Zerg's opening, just controlling that ridge. There's two ridges that divide the center of the map. Zerg will control their ridge, take their three bases. Terran controls their ridge, takes their two bases, and, and we move towards a defiler play. I think, in my eyes, this map is, is pretty good for Terran, and I think Idris should feel comfortable here. I agree. I mean, he was uh, slightly annoyed about that and the mistranslation of why the natural formation was changed. Um, the mistranslation was that it was to help Terrans against Butylus Micro, whereas that um, alteration there has really made Butylus Micro a lot more difficult to, t to handle. However, I do think he's on top of it, and I, I, I really hope to see a really strong showing from him on this, on this map, considering that he did 